Welcome to our 35th edition of Cool Tools, where I get to show you some of the clever and innovative tools that we work with in our shop. Today, I picked seven relatively small items that I think have really improved my shop time since I've been using them, many for several years now. Most of these tools, with a couple exceptions, are pretty inexpensive too, so be sure to stick around until the end for them all. I think you find the last one particularly interesting. As always, if any sponsors are involved, they're disclosed at the beginning of the video and down by the links below. Please use those links to learn more about anything you see, including the current price. Some have limited time discounts, so it's definitely worth checking out those links. You'll find them by expanding the video description, and they're also pinned to the top of the comment section. Now let's get started. I've been using diamond plates for manual sharpening for many years, and I still love them, but they are expensive, and some of my viewers just aren't willing to spend that kind of money. Well, some time ago, I came across this 8-inch stone that has many of the features that I insist on, such as a solid steel substrate that's perfectly flat with dual-sided grit, except it's not diamonds, it's CBN. Now, I discovered cubic boron nitride for sharpening several years ago at a woodworking show. I met a guy named Ken Rizza. He's widely respected, especially among the woodturning world, as the CBN guru. And he set me up with some CBN wheels for my bench grinder. That changed everything for me. I would never go back to regular bench grinder wheels. So are CBN crystals better than diamond crystals for sharpening? Well, for high speed application, I could say absolutely. On your dry bench grinders, they are definitely better for sharpening. But what about a bench stone like this one? Honestly, they seem to cut just as fast and wear just as well as diamonds in my experience. But the cost is significantly lower, as much as 50%. They also come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. The credit card size is great for things like router bits and Forstner bits. The pocket hones are especially popular among hunters and fishermen for knives and tools. One of my favorites is the slip stone that has radiused edges for gouges and other curved tools. The dowels are really useful for turning and carving gouges as well, and for knife sharpening. And if you do still prefer water stones for sharpening, and I personally use sometimes Shapton's really fine stones instead of stropping, well, this huge 4x10 flattening plate is ideal for maintaining those. I just spritz on some water, and my Shapton is dressed in just a few seconds. Really, the quality of these CBN stones are superb for the price, but I do try to find something to complain about whenever I review tools, and in this case, I find that the edges of the larger stones are a little sharp, especially on the coarser grits, because those CBN crystals go all the way to the edge, you could cut yourself. I solved that problem with just a little bit of sandpaper. If you want to check these out, give Ken a visit over at his website, it's woodturnerswonders.com. I'll link to it below this video. Ken runs a small business with great people that are really worth supporting, especially with products like this. Do you ever get tired of breaking your shop pencil lead? I've been using thick lead holder type pencils for years. They hold up to the rough lumber surfaces and they can take a beating. There are lots of brands making them, I've used others in the past, but the fast cap versions have become my favorite for a couple reasons. First, they come from a great small business, and as you know, I like to support small businesses whenever I can. And like pretty much everything that fast cap makes, these are full of clever little features. For one thing, each pencil comes with three different leads. You have graphite for wooden paper, soapstone for dark woods like walnut, as well as for marking metal objects, and red crayon, which works well on dark woods too, and things like tile and concrete. They advance easily, they never jam up, and if you need a fine line, there's a handy sharpener under the eraser. The body is lightweight, hard-wearing aluminum. There's an eraser on the end, and a handy little clip. Really, what more could you want on a job site or a workshop? Well, how about a permanent marker with a long nose to get into tight spots? This is another really clever fast cap idea. They come in three colors, black, silver, and gold, as well as an extra fine black. I love these for tracing templates, for marking inside holes, and getting into other tight spaces. The ink is permanent and waterproof, and each also has a standard wide chisel point on the opposite end when you need something like that. It's just some really clever ideas that prove genuinely useful in my shop. In fact, these may be some of the handiest tools I've ever had on this show. 
you really should check them out at the links below this video. It's no secret among our regular viewers that I'm a big fan of Isotune's Bluetooth hearing protection. I've been using them for many years. Everyone in my shop has been using them. We've tried just about every model they have. So while I was excited to get their new Air Defenders headphones, I wasn't expecting them to be much different from the Link Muffs that I wear every day. But I was wrong. These are by far the most comfortable over-the-ear muffs I have ever worn. Not that I have complaints about the other ones, but if you wear any large muffs for a long time, they can get a little heavy on the head. My ears get a little sore from the pressure after several hours of nonstop use. It's typical of every over-the-ear headset that I've ever worn. But the Air Defenders are significantly lighter. They have a fully padded headband, the ear padding seems a bit softer, and they have less clamping pressure on the sides of my head. Still enough to properly keep my ears safe from noise, but not so much that they become uncomfortable over time. So now I'm torn. I used to wear these most of the time because I can put them on and take them off really quickly as compared to wearing earbuds in the ears. But when I know I was going to spend a lot of time in the shop, I go ahead and put in the earbuds because they were lighter in weight. Now I find myself wearing these all day long because they're just so comfortable and convenient. I know, it's a good dilemma to have, and there is a downside to these. The battery seems a little bit smaller, so you get 40 hours between charges instead of the 50 you get from these, but it's a whole work week, right? If you're looking for a really comfortable way to protect your ears and to listen to music or YouTube or podcasts, whatever you want to listen to, whenever you want to listen to it, both inside the shop and outside when you're mowing the lawn or wherever it's noisy, you may want to check out the Isotune Air Defender Bluetooth earmuffs. Do it right after you finish this video because I talked Emily over at Isotunes into giving our viewers 15% off just the Air Defenders with the discount code STUMPY15, but that's just for a few days. I also have a regular discount code that'll get you a discount on anything in the store, but I think it's 10%, not 15. Be sure to use the link below this video so you can get that discount applied automatically. A drill press vise is one of those tools that most woodworkers only use occasionally, so we don't want to spend a ton of money on one. But when we do need one, we're glad to have something that's reliable, on hand, and ready to go for that odd job that is just so much easier with the vise. I've had a few over the years. Most were heavy cast iron and a little clunky. Then about five years ago, I picked up this one from Bora Tools. It has an aluminum body, which makes it significantly lighter, so it's easier to move around and to store. It also has some features that I really like, such as a nice wide four inch capacity between the jaws, but I don't have to turn the screw a thousand times to close it because there's a quick release button on the body that I would not want to be without. I like how the handle has two positions. It's most comfortable when it's straight, but when I need more torque, I can turn it to the side. I also like its soft grip. It mounts to most drill presses with bolts through the holes, but I usually keep it on a wooden base so I can just quickly clamp it down. And while it's designed for drill presses, I can clamp this to any surface or bench for all sorts of things around the shop, such as holding conduit or pipe when I'm cutting it with a hacksaw. If I had to find something to complain about, it would be that mine did not come with non-marring jaw pads. However, mine, as I said, is about five years old, and the new ones look like they do have pads, so that's nice. It's just a great, reasonably priced, very portable tool with a lot of uses. Check it out at the link below this video. The Harvey Universal Roller Guides are one of the coolest tools we've ever had on this series. You really have to see how they work. They are roller guides for the table saw or the router table. Basically, they function like a feather board to hold a workpiece against a fence for safer, more accurate cuts without chatter and kickback. But these have some clever features that no feather board can compete with. Let's start with the rollers. They contain one-way bearings, which when combined with the grippy tires really put the brake on potential kickbacks. The pressure is adjustable, not just in the way that you lock it in place, but you can actually dial in more or less pressure after it's been mounted. This makes them much easier to set up properly and it eliminates a problem that I often have with feather boards. For example, let's say I start to feed my workpiece and I decide that it's either too loose or too tight. I can dial in the pressure on the fly without loosening up the knobs. If I want to back my piece out, as I often do when I'm just setting up and not actually making a cut, 
Normally, I'd have to wrench that piece upward to get it out. But with this, I merely note the dial position, then I release the pressure, remove the workpiece easily, and then return it right back to the proper pressure setting when I'm ready for my cut. The wheels also operate on an independent suspension mechanism. So imperfections in the edge I'm cutting won't cause a workpiece to jam up in one spot and get looser in another. The whole thing is reversible, so it can work on either side of a fence. And it's compatible with other machines like your router table, shapers, bandsaws, anything with a standard 3 quarter inch wide, 3 8 inch deep T-style miter slot. The build is exceptional in quality. Everything is anodized aluminum, even the knobs, there's no plastic on it. And it comes in two sizes, single for most uses, and a double for special cuts that require that higher support. My only complaint is that they're pretty heavy. The single is over four pounds, and the double size is five and a half pounds. That and their overall bulk means this isn't something that you just wanna toss around like a feather board. But I'd rather have quality than a lighter weight. They aren't cheap, and they aren't for everyone. But if you're among the segment of our viewers who appreciate fine tools, I suggest you check these out at the link below the video. This one is a follow-up to a tool we talked about way back in 2016. That's when I upgraded my first planer, which was an old Delta 12-inch with a carbide helical cutter head. It was expensive, but I was pretty sure it was going to be worth the cost. Well, since that time, I've put one in my old Delta 6-inch jointer, which I still have over in the corner here. Then when I got a new planer, I upgraded that to one. A couple years later, I moved into this new shop with a new, larger jointer and planer, and I upgraded those to helical carbide heads too. So here I am, five years later, with perhaps more experience with these heads than anyone else on YouTube, having installed them in five machines and having used both the Bird Shelix and the Lux Cut 2 brands. So I feel like I can add some value by giving you a quick update. These are not cheap upgrades, so are they still worth the cost? Well, after five years, I still firmly feel that they are among the best tool upgrades I have ever made. If I ever get a different joint or a planer in the shop, I'm going to unhesitatingly upgrade those to helical heads as well. I used to get frustrated with my old joiner and planer. The knives dulled so quickly, it seemed like they always needed changing. I avoided that like the plague because they were such a pain, especially on the jointer. So I was always working with dull knives. When I did finally change them, I would almost immediately get a nick in the edge and then I'd have to put up with lines in my wood until the next change. Or I'd get nasty tear out if I wasn't really careful about grain direction. And if the grain shifted in the middle of a board, as it often does, I knew I simply could not avoid problems. My dust collection on my jointer was particularly a problem because those long ribbons that the straight knives create were constantly plugging it up and I had to clean it out. All of this changed when I upgraded to my first carbide helical head. My machines are quieter, the dust collection is better, and I don't get any tear out, even in figured wood. I have yet to actually wear out a set of the cutters because they last so much longer than steel, and rotating them is far simpler than aligning the straight knives, especially on the jointer. I know it's not a cheap upgrade, and I'm not saying it's for everyone, but if you are considering it, I highly recommend you contact Stefan over at MyWoodCutters.com because he can help you find the right one for your machine, either a Bird Shelix or a Lux Cut. He can also get them faster than ordering direct sometimes and sometimes cheaper. And he can help you out with the installation and service down the road that the other mail order companies aren't really helping out with. It's just another great small business worth supporting. I'll link to MyWoodCutters.com below this video. Time for the biggest surprise in today's video. Do you have a fire extinguisher in your shop? I have one, but it's not my only line of defense. I also like fire blankets. They're inexpensive, they're fast to deploy, and they don't have an expiration date like a fire extinguisher. This one is 40 by 40 inches, and it's made from a heavy material that will not burn or melt in temperatures up to 2,000 degrees. The way it works is simple. You hang it on a wall somewhere, convenient. I like that because it doesn't get buried in a cabinet like some fire extinguishers do. It's easy to spot when you're freaking out because there's a fire in the shop. You grab the straps at the bottom and you pull. I'm not going to pull mine out because I don't want to try to fold it back up in here again. Then you simply smother the fire with a blanket. You starve it for oxygen and it goes out. It works on wood fires, grease fires, whatever. They come in a two-pack, so my wife has one in the kitchen too. 
It's just peace of mind for about 10 bucks each. You can't beat that. I'll link to them below this video if you want to check them out. I really suggest you do. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Tools, but before you go, I have a cool tool bonus for you. This is the CRB7 router jig system from Empower Tools, and it does just about everything with amazing accuracy due to its clever micro adjuster. It's just one of the many product innovations from this small family owned company. You gotta check them out at the link in the notes below this video.